I just purchased three high risk altcoins that I'm going to reveal in this video and you know the game. You know how this goes. Higher risk, higher reward. And these are the highest risk coins I've purchased probably in the past three years. And the best part about it is that it fits perfectly into a new emerging narrative. And you know how narratives work. AI tokens caught a narrative. It starts taking off, right? Meme coins caught a narrative. It started to take off. We're talking about thousands of percentages. Look at Shiba Inu. Look at these big coins. They're going up by major percentages because of narratives. It drives demand. So I'm going to lay out a case for you about a new emerging narrative that at this point is pretty much guaranteed. It's the biggest narrative in crypto. There's nothing else that compares to how big this is. I'm going to prove that with facts, evidence, historical data. And of course, I'm going to show you how to capitalize on this narrative with three extremely high risk altcoins. This is the wild, wild west of finance. It's time to make money. Let's go. Keep watching. So I really got to break it down for you, okay? Because the higher the risk goes, the higher the reward. We all know that. But when I mean there's risk behind this, I mean there's risk behind this. I mean, the whole entire crypto market is already pretty crazy, but we're taking it another level in this video. And I bought three altcoins. Yes, I put the money where my mouth is. But remember, I have strategy. I use something called risk management. I got to say it again, one more time, risk management. I don't base my safety off of coins. A lot of times we can get caught in this tribalistic thought where all we do is talk about how good my coin is and we can't take any information in about how something's probably off about the coin that I purchased because you're trying to defend yourself. That's your safety. The reason why you can't take somebody else's perspective is because you're married to these coins. I do not marry the coins, okay? I use risk management for my safety. I can care less about the coin. I just want to make money. And hopefully that's why you're here too. And again, when I lay these coins out, I have to follow it up with so many like mini disclaimers. You must use risk management. If you come in here, and you invest your entire portfolio into these altcoins and you don't have any other altcoins and you don't understand what you're doing and you don't get anything, that is your fault, okay? Straight up. Now, on the flip side, I do think that these coins are gonna perform extremely well. Like well on the perspective of you have to invest in something like this to get a thousand X. Now we always talk about a hundred X's, but when you're looking for a thousand X, it's like a different level that you have to go to. This is that level. We're going there, okay? But I have a lot of research for you guys. So understand when I do something, I'm typically planning it out on extreme levels. So I've been thinking about this for a very long time and something new just came out and it will all be revealed in the video. And I promise you will find comfort with the research that I provide in this video. And if you're new here, like the video, subscribe to the channel and share it with a friend. I've been doing crypto for eight years. I've personally coached thousands of people in crypto trading. I've made millions of dollars. I've lost millions of dollars. You know, I had 35 employees at one time and I take this very, very serious. I am not playing around. And if you wanted to get access to my checklist, which basically helps me find these coins, essentially what I've done is I've distilled all of my knowledge into a checklist. So I don't really look for coins in an emotional way. All I do is shift through the market and I look and see, okay, that coin has a superior team versus this team. It's called fundamental analysis. And I compare and contrast the attributes of the coins. And this allows me to get to the coins very, very fast. And I'm just shifting through them and I'm looking at which one's better within the narrative. And it's so straightforward and streamlined. And what I did is I actually made a complete training on this. All you have to do is click the link below and you'll get access to this training and I'll give you the checklist for free, 100% free. So you could do your own research in this market and really look and see on a professional level, not from somebody on Twitter, just randomly shilling coins in a free telegram group. That's the easiest way for you to lose your money, your own research. That's what I wanna provide you today is research that I have done that leads you to you doing your own research and taking it like a professional. Hopefully, 
you want to be a professional because in this market like i said with these altcoins we're talking about thousand x's thousand percent like, <laughs> i get it who what can we compare that with we cannot compare that with anything so pay attention I'm gonna break it down for you. So the first thing I wanna do is basically show you that narratives run demand. When people get hype over a coin similar to a social media post going viral, these ecosystems will go viral. We all have been watching Solana and the meme coins, right? And you guys know I talked about the base ecosystem with Coinbase like a couple of months ago. And as you can see, this is where we see these big, big major percentages on the short term, right? We see these big percentages on the short term because people want to get active with the story. When you get a story, like there's a story behind what's going on here, it gives people a compelling reason to invest in assets. So here's one small example. As you can see here, Pantera raising funds to buy Solana holding from FTX. So FTX exchange went down. You guys should know this by now, went bankrupt. And they had a whole bunch of Solana. They were holding a lot of Solana. And we see here that we have a big hedge fund trying to buy the Solana. And as you can see, we have some you know, projects on Solana pumping pretty, pretty big. Right? This is a big narrative. It's the sole narrative. And if you've been watching my videos, you know I don't really believe in this narrative. I think it's weak. But I have the next big narrative. The next big narrative is layer twos. And I want to break down the reason why I think this is the biggest narrative in all of cryptocurrency that we will ever have. There's going to be nothing compared to this narrative. And I have proof behind that. But as you can see here, we have the Duncan upgrade happening in five days. You have five days to catch what I'm saying right now. This is no joke. This is serious. You got to move fast. You have five days, guys. We have five days. As you can see here, March 13th, we have an upgrade on Ethereum. I'm not going to go into the technical details. It's pretty much irrelevant. But long story short, Ethereum is specifically upgrading the entire blockchain, which does not happen that often, by the way. It hardly ever happens. They're changing the entire infrastructure of Ethereum to accommodate layer twos. They want people to use layer two blockchains because it's cheaper, way cheaper transaction fees on ethereum are like seven to 15 bucks per transaction on a layer two it's like one cent to five cents so they want people using layer twos they really really want people to do that because they can go mainstream they can go to all of the people all over the world imagine the person investing 50 bucks in africa and things of that nature they don't want to spend 15 dollars on a transaction fee that's their entire portfolio right and maybe you are pissed off with transaction fees this is what layer twos do here's a little graphic as you can see here it's very simple straightforward we have layer ones and then layer twos stack on top of the layer ones and the security and all of the decentralizations come from the layer one. So this is decentralized and this is where all the security comes from. But we have layer twos that stack on top that give the user experience an increase. The user experience is way, way, way better on layer twos. So this is what people don't understand. And this is what you call alpha. Listen to what I'm saying right now. Stop what you're doing. Take notes for real. This might actually change your life. This one piece of information can get you so far if you understand what I'm saying. It's straightforward. The biggest narrative in crypto that's ever been involved when Bitcoin started, it does not matter. The entire history of crypto is layer ones. That's the biggest narrative. Look, Ethereum's a layer one. BNB's a layer one. Solana's a layer one. XRP's a layer one. Cardano's a layer one. Dogecoin could be considered a layer one. Shiba Inu is not. It's a meme coin. That's the second biggest from my personal experience. Avalanche is a layer one. Polkadot's a layer zero. Tron's a layer one. The vast majority of the top 10 coins are layer ones. So you're probably asking the question, Alex, so then why don't you just buy another layer one? Isn't that where all the money's going to go? Wrong. I'll show you why. This event that's happening in the next five days will change the history of everything. Everything. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So when it comes to specifically smart contract platforms, meaning Ethereum and below, not Bitcoin, it's not a smart contract platform. Yes, I know there's a whole layer two ecosystem coming to Bitcoin. I get it, but it's not there yet. What I'm talking about is working layer ones right now with smart contracts. When it comes to that world, Ethereum dominates all of it very, very badly. 
There is not even anything that can slightly compare to the Ethereum dominance. I know some people don't want to accept this information because you're married to some coins. I understand that people have hyped you up and there's these small communities that have echo chambers that tell you the same thing over and over again and they've indoctrinated you into a layer one and that's all you can think about and that's all you can talk about. But that is not the reality of the situation. The truth with data, the real data shows Ethereum dominates and nothing is even close to comparison. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is because they have all the infrastructure, they have the developers, they have the liquidity. We're looking at to TVL or total value lock. Look at the liquidity. There's nothing even close. There's no one blockchain that can compare with Ethereum. But then I'm not going to buy Ethereum because Ethereum is already big. Correct. I'm not going to buy Ethereum either. I can care less. But you have to understand this fact because the entire point of a layer two is to stack on top of a layer one. So the narratives of layer ones dominating the cryptocurrency space by percentage gains has just flipped. It just flipped to layer twos. And see, the thing is, these layer twos can stack on multiple layer ones. The layer one game is out. It's done. It's done. And I'm calling it ahead of time. These layer ones will go up in price, but they will not get even close to what's happening on layer twos. I can pretty much guarantee that the narrative is going to flip and I'm calling it right now. You better listen what I'm saying. I've been in this market for eight years. I've watched it guys. I've watched all the narratives longer than you. Probably these layer ones will do okay, but it's all about the layer twos. It's all about the layer twos. Ethereum has the most decentralization, has the most security. People trust it the most. The biggest NFTs on the entire planet were minted on Ethereum. I'm talking about the ones that are worth like $50 million. Those NFTs are on Ethereum. They're not on Tron. They're definitely not on Binance Smart Train. They're definitely not on Solana. There's some big ones. Solana got some buzz, but they can't compete. Look at Solana, 3.33% compared to 60%. Ethereum won that game. I don't care. There's going to be some comments below. People are going to be freaking out. But what about money? But about debit? I don't care. The facts are the facts. So all I care about is what layer two is going to extract the most liquidity away from ETH. That's all I care about because I want to see, okay? I want to see money flow into a layer two. Hear me out. Just take one second to look at this price chart. Look at this. This is the total value locked in layer twos. Layer twos are going to dominate. This is going up exponentially. This is not a linear growth chart. This is considered exponential growth. This is big. If I believe, and hear me out, that layer one narrative is going to do well, but it's dead. It's like, it's not going to do as well as layer two. This is the new thing, right? Layer two is a new thing. If I believe that's true, right? Look at how undervalued these layer twos are. Look at how small they are. The goal here is not to find the greatest and best thing. If that was the case, then we already found it. It's Ethereum. The goal here is to try to anticipate the narrative and find a thing that's going to be the latest and greatest in a couple years, right? We're supposed to be looking for undervalued narratives. And I believe this is going to be the biggest thing since layer ones. I don't like meme coins are great. You know, the gaming ecosystem, amazing, but there is nothing compared to the layer one, layer two narrative, nothing. Look at the top 10 coins. I'm gonna go through it one more time for you guys. These are all layer ones, guys. Like 90% of them are layer ones. Hear me out. So layer twos are going to steal the show. And guess what? We have an upgrade that makes the accommodations for the layer two. It's basically making it cheaper for layer twos. Like it's gonna make it extremely cheap. Like right now it's like a cent to five cents. They're gonna, they're gonna make it even cheaper and faster. But that's not what I'm worried about. See, that's what you guys are not catching. I'm not worried about the cheaper and the faster transactions. They're already really cheap. What I'm really looking at is the fact that this dude, Vitalik Buterin, the, the rain keeper of all crypto, right? Right now, I mean, Satoshi Nakamoto, we don't know where he's at. We know where he's at. And he created Ethereum and Ethereum's dominating everything. This dude is signaling layer twos. He's telling his customers, hey, layer ones, 
not working, go to layer twos, go to layer twos. So it's like, bro, you got to catch on. You got to catch on, get out of your emotions, catch on, listen to what I'm saying. So I built that up to say, this is how I found some of my big altcoins, you know, Arbitrum, right? Right here, Arbitrum one had Pendle finance. So if you've been watching my videos and watch for the past couple months, I ate off of that. When everybody was calling bear market, the market's going to drop. I ate, I put 50% of my portfolio in Pendle finance, Axel R. This has been driving a lot of my investment decisions and a new layer two just came out that actually really excites me. This is called the blast ecosystem. This blast ecosystem is kind of crazy and they just came out recently. Why? Because they knew there was going to be an extreme amount of hype around the Duncan upgrade. They just came out to capitalize on it. What I'm about to show you is going to blow your mind. There's no other layer two that's on this level when it comes to getting people money. So my whole thing is what can extract the most liquidity from Ethereum? Basically that if you guys are listening to what I'm saying, I want layer two that can take the most money away from ETH. That is what I want to invest in because that's how the coins are going to go up in value. And not only do I want a layer two that's going to take money away from ETH, but I want one that's new. And here we go. We got blast right here. As you can see the TVO, it just molly whopped all of them. I don't know how it became top three so fast. It just launched. It's up 18%. Look at that. Look at the TVO growth. The mechanism behind it is pretty crazy. I'm going to show you some more stuff. So blast is the layer two that helps you earn automatically. This is crazy. So think about all of the liquidity providers, all of the people that can earn automatically. Other layer twos don't have yield. So the value of your assets depreciate over time. This is true. This is inflation. So right now on Ethereum, there's inflation on Ethereum. I hope you guys understand that. There's an amount of coins that come out of Ethereum. It's inflation. It's not a fixed supply. That being said, if you're not earning yield, essentially your money is losing value by you just holding it. Now, don't get me wrong. ETH goes up in value. So it's not always perfectly the case, but imagine if your ETH went up in value and you earn automatically. Uh, this is native yield. This is not, this is not normal. Your balance on blast compounds automatically. So if you have money on blast, you automatically will earn yield without you having to do anything. And they take it from basically a very uh, baseline protocol. If you guys ever understood Lidao, Lidao is one of the biggest, I think it is the biggest right now staking platform in all of Ethereum. So what they do is you give them the money to go on the layer two. They give you a blast alternative and then they take the money and they actually stake it for you automatically. And then on the blockchain of blast, you receive yield. This is for technical users. You guys can dive into it if you want to. I highly suggest you do but it's causing a buzz for sure. So as you can see here, after the merge, Ethereum provides 4% yield on ETH. On-chain T-bill protocols provide 5% yield on stable coins. If users do not match or beat these rates, they are losing money to a form of inflation. L2s today do not have this yield. Incorporating ETH and a stable coin yield natively requires a new L2 design from the ground up. This is a brand new type of mechanism that nobody else has ever seen before, really. So just think about all the liquidity providers that are going to come on this just for the simple fact of this whole new system, right? Blast is EVM compatible, which is very important. This means that you could basically take a protocol from Ethereum that's already running. So let's say hypothetically, I'm just throwing some projects out there. Let's say Uniswap wanted to deploy onto Blast. They could do it with the same code. That's the whole point of it. So you don't have to make anything new as a developer to come onto Blast. They make it, they, they did this on purpose. Trust me. They're trying to make it extremely easy for people to come over so they can extract more liquidity. So long story short, just to make it simple for you to understand, if you bridge money over to this layer two, not only are you getting the benefit of fast speeds, right? Cheap transactions, but you're also getting this automatic yield. Like there's money automatically going into your wallet just for having the assets on this layer two. Now people are going to ask the questions, but that's like a sketchy DeFi play. Like that's super weird. Like how is that happening? Is this a Ponzi scheme? No, actually Ethereum allows you to do this. If you guys didn't know this, if you had ETH, 
you can go to Ethereum and get a 4% yield automatically from the protocol, not from some random DeFi project that somebody made that's an anonymous founder. I'm talking about from the main protocol, similar to mining Bitcoin. So when you mine Bitcoin, you can earn rewards, right? But with staking, it's a little bit different. You don't need to have a whole mining computer. You don't need all of that. So with Ethereum, they actually allow this to happen. Now, the problem is, is that on Ethereum, you actually have to stake the capital. And when you stake the capital, you can't do anything with it. So this is a big thing for a lot of people. On this layer two, I could get the free yield, still participate in all the coin projects and move my money wherever I want. And it, it's just, it auto compounds. It, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this is new. It's ridiculous. And, and a lot of people are like, oh, where's the yield come from? I'm explaining to you. It comes from the protocol level. So basically, when you put your money onto Blast, there's a wallet. It's called a multi-sig wallet. And this is like the big concern about this. And it's pretty normal from what I've seen. But there's five people that own this wallet. And they do the staking for you on Ethereum main chain and then send you the rewards on the L2. That's the point. They make it extremely convenient for everybody and this beats the inflation, right? This is why they were able to attract so much TVL or total value lock so quickly because it's just, it's, it's like a no brainer. The only thing you should be, you know, basically concerned with is the security. So let me go into that. So right here is kind of a visual representation to try to make it easy for you. So let's say hypothetically, you have a thousand dollars worth of USDC. So I'm gonna do right here, USDC. Excuse me, I'm drawing with my mouse, right? Now let's say this is on the Ethereum, right? So I'm gonna put E for Ethereum. This is the Ethereum layer one. So you wanna bridge it over. You wanna send your capital to this layer two. So you're gonna send it to the bridge. And what happens is it goes here and then you get the blast version. So I'm gonna put B for blast. That's a horrible B, USDC. So you get the blast version of that thousand dollars. But what happened to this? This gets sent to the multi-sig wallet. Multi-sig just means multiple signatures. You need multiple signatures to do something. So those five people, so we're gonna talk about basically five people that control this multi-sig wallet. What they do is they take your money and they send it over to a protocol called LIDAO, right? And in LIDAO, you basically have access to stake any capital you put on there to the Ethereum layer one and receive yield that is native to the Ethereum layer one. It's very important because there's all types of yield, but this is basically the most safe and secure and most guaranteed yield you can get in all of crypto. So Lidao gets these rewards from the e from the USDC that you gave basically to the Blast multi-sig wallet, and the rewards get automatically sent to your wallet on blast that's what happens they basically auto stake it for you it's very interesting so here's a visual representation of that as you can see here tvl breakdown this is blast tvl look at where all the value is boom right here it's and the st is light out that's that's a lot light out um ethereum but they also have the regular eth but most of the money as you can see there is in light out so you can literally see where the money's at so right here, as you can see, they have a uh, multi-sig security, and this is pretty normal. Like, as you can see here, Arbitrum has it, Optimism and Polygon. And honestly, you could read this thread for yourself, but it just basically talks about how five people have access to a wallet. And if three make a decision, then they can do whatever they want, right? Now, what you have to understand is that this is good security. This is normal. This is normal stuff. Although there's a lot of controversy, like people are saying, Arbitrum has 12 people and all 12 people are public, right? So like Arbitrum, we know who owns the wallet. Like we know who controls that wallet. We don't know that on Blast, but we kind of do. And that's the important part. So we have the Blur Marketplace. So Blur, and this is another big one. The creator of, okay, the creator of Blast actually created the Blur Marketplace. So this is the number two NFT marketplace in all of crypto. This is another big positive sign. Like this guy clearly knows what he's doing. Like he knows what he's doing. He created this NFT marketplace and he's been able to get to the top two spot, which is crazy because OpenSea was like out the longest and he was able to destroy everybody and get to the top two spot. So that's pretty big. But see, the thing is he's he right here, the guy that created 
Blur and the guy that also created Blast is public. So obviously, he's probably one of the multi-sig owners, right? Because he, on his main page, look, Blur plus Blast, he claims he created this layer two. So there is somebody that is held accountable. He is going to be held accountable if some funds are robbed or whatever the case is. And we're in a bull market. There's no reason for them to exit scam when the whole entire market is going up in value. He wants to make money. Like that's a fool's move. Like he created this great NFT marketplace. Like why would he do that now, right? So that whole security you know, concern is out of the question. We have someone to hold accountable. It's the same type of security metric as, you know, for example, Arbitrum or any of the other layer twos. It's very similar. The only difference is that they're anonymous, but we have somebody to hold accountable. And it's not just somebody. This guy's crazy. He dropped out of high school to go to Y Combinator at 17. That is like one of the biggest incubators in the world. Like it is, it's probably considered the biggest in the world, meaning he's understood business to a high level. He's a, he's a genius, right? Studied math at MIT. Then he received the Theo Fellowship to leave MIT and he started Namebase. Do you guys understand how big Namebase is? Like, so this dude at the age of 17, I don't know when he started Namebase, but like 17, 18, 19 years old, started Namebase and sold it to Namecheap. Namecheap is the biggest domain website seller of domains in the world. Like this is like, I'm pretty sure a billion dollar company, probably even like 10, $20 billion. So he has an exit. Then he creates the second biggest NFT marketplace, right? And then he creates Blast, which is already number three by TVL in the entire crypto space. Why would he exit scam? That doesn't make sense. Why would he exit scam? He has so much credibility behind him. His face is public. He has all these people backing him from MIT and all these things. Like, why would, like, he's going to make money. He's trying to make money long term, obviously, because all of his actions are shown to make money long term right so i'm not really worried about the security too much to be honest with you guys so let's get this straight we have the biggest narrative in crypto which is transitioning to layer twos which i believe is going to be the biggest narrative in crypto moving forward right we have a layer two that just came out like probably like i mean they had the the pre the pre-launch and they just had, they just started the main launch right so it just came out like i'm talking about weeks ago right? And their mechanism is unlike anything we've ever seen in the cryptocurrency market. And their whole purpose of this mechanism is to extract the liquidity away from Ethereum. Just think about what I'm saying right now, right? We have a public founder that can be held accountable if anything happens. And this dude is basically a boy genius and has done the highest levels of credibility. So I talk about a lot of credibility. Like you, you guys have seen me talk about teams and things like that. The difference between this guy is not only does he have the traditional credibility, like in the regular world, non-crypto world, but he has already created the second biggest NFT project, right? And in all of crypto. So he has real world credibility and the crypto credibility, which is a whole nother ball game. So he's public. He can be held accountable. This layer two is ripe for altcoins. So... For the remainder of the video, I'm going to go into three altcoins that I purchased on this layer two that I think is going to do extremely well over the next five days with this new layer two narrative that's happening with the Duncan upgrade. But please keep in mind, it is so new that the ecosystem is being built out right now as we speak. It is extremely new, guys. So this is for advanced users. You can participate if you want. That's on you. I can't make decisions for you but it is brand new and a lot of the data i had a hard time even fi finding myself um i mean you can't really do too much fundamental analysis on the coins too much you can you can look and see where the liquidity is going and i'm going to talk about that but like most of these teams have anonymous founders because of how new this is they usually come public later so i'm using an aggressive amount of risk management so this is like an aggressive amount of risk management and um, I'm using a very small amount of capital in comparison to my portfolio. So I had to give that disclaimer before we jump into this altcoins, but I do think that this could be a thousand X. There could be at least one or two protocols on this layer two that will do a thousand X for sure. So I'm gonna dive into it. Now, what you guys have to understand is this is so new that you can't find the regular data that you would find on these websites. Like CoinMarketCap, CoinGecko, they're still updating it. That's how new it is. 
So you got to really do digging and you have to look for liquidity. Thruster, from my experience, as of the time of you watching this video, is the best and biggest decentralized exchange. I've seen a lot of buzz around it. It just looks like where the money's at. This is where the money's at. This is where most of the TVL is. And also the biggest coins, their biggest liquidity pool is on Thruster. So this is where I'll do my trading and all of that. By the way, in my group, I'm going to be launching a training on how to buy the coins on you know, Blast, how to bridge your tokens over, how to basically utilize the entire layer two. There will be a complete tutorial in my group. Um, but um, this is where I'm going to buy the coins and this is where all the liquidity is. And in this uh, actual layer two decentralized exchange, we have a couple of tokens. This is up 60%, but I, I believe it's just getting started. Honestly, the first coin is going to be Orbit. So it's very simple. This is a lending protocol, right? So when people come on to Blast, they get yield, but then you can get more yield with Orbit. Now, again, there's not too much fundamental analysis you could do on these coins. You can't look into the team too much. You can't look into all this stuff because they don't, they just don't show it. It's so limited. And I'm sure they're going to update it as they go. But the reason why I'm jumping into Orbit is because they have a big liquidity pool. They have a big liquidity pool and the price is appreciating. It's just clearly shown to kind of not be a scam. You could see credibility by looking and seeing how much money is in the liquidity pool. And they have a pretty good, they have a pretty good amount of liquidity, like millions. We're looking at millions, right? And again, as, as you can see this pump, it's just clearly showing it's not a scam. Orbit is a decentralized liquidity protocol that facilitates the lending and borrowing of Blast assets. Orbit's innovation is to make use of Blast's native yield to provide a better lending and borrowing experience. The protocol is expected to generate yields that are more competitive to existing lending protocols. So this is like one of the biggest things in DeFi is lending and borrowing. So we know for a fact that this is a confirmed narrative within DeFi. I know for a fact that if this is the biggest lending and borrowing protocol, which it looks like it already is, to be honest, there's no other lending and borrowing protocol that has this much TVO. So if this is it, it will be a big project on this protocol. It will go up a lot, like a lot, guys. I'm just being straight up with you. That's just the way it is. Now, the second protocol is the biggest in liquidity. As you can see here, 364 million in liquidity right there. Now, they're very interesting. Very interesting. I've never seen anything like it. Um, they basically have an infinite, unruggable liquidity. I'll explain exactly what that means. Uh, but basically, if we come over here to the Discord, this is the best explanation I got in base theory. If we go to the pinned messages, this is the best explanation I've gotten because it is pretty complex. But basically, they, they rig the liquidity pool so that um, you can never get rugged. So basically, you can never lose all of your money. So right here, there's two different token supplies that you need to think about. Number one, the floating supply. And number two, the total supply. The floating supply is tokens that have been purchased by external parties and not owned by baseline. So what they're talking about is you have the supply in the liquidity pool. When people come and start purchasing it, that's considered the floating supply. Now the total supply is basically all the tokens in circulation, including what baseline has. So the protocol cares about floating supply, which is the net tokens that have been purchased from the pool. Basically the tokens that are out in the world, that's what they care about, right? This, this is why it's very interesting. The protocol expects all of these to be sold into the pool eventually. So it rebalances liquidity to make sure it has enough reserves to buy back all the tokens in circulation. Meaning if everybody in the world try to sell all of their yes tokens at once, the liquidity pool already has math built into it that will automatically be able to buy all the tokens. Like everybody will be able to sell. That's the whole purpose of it. It's very interesting. I've never heard anything like this. And uh, this is definitely an experiment, but I am actually pretty excited about it, to be honest. When we say the token supply grows, we are not talking about the floating supply. The only place where new tokens can be minted is to baseline directly, and they're immediately deployed into the pool. So meaning when they mint tokens, they're doing it to guarantee that they could buy back all of the floating supply. Meaning again, there will never be a rug pool. That's the whole purpose of it. And that's one of the biggest problems in crypto is the liquidity providers are rug pulling everybody. So this was actually extremely interesting to me. Very, very, very interesting. So yes, I'm going to invest in yes, right? So say yes to yes. <laughs>
And then the last one is a completely degenerate play. This is why you need risk management. It's called Mia. And this is a meme coin with the biggest liquidity pool. So if you noticed, I'm really hedging my safety and understanding and the research on the liquidity pools because that really shows that people are putting their money where their mouth is. We can go into fundamentals all day, but if there's no money in the pool, then who cares, right? And they have the biggest meme coin liquidity pool. Mia has the biggest meme coin liquidity pool. So yeah, we all know that meme coins are a trend. And yeah, so I'm splitting up my dollars into th these three coins. Um, and yeah, they're already up like big percentages are already doing very well. The next five days we have the Duncan upgrade. And I believe that these coins will likely benefit from that uh, immensely. There will be a lot more people moving into the layer two world. Once like the steam catches up, I think billions of dollars are going to pour into all the layer twos. I think specifically blast is going to get the majority of it because people are going to realize how crazy blast is. And then I think these coins are going to appreciate in value uh, because of that. So yeah, get active. Again, I'm going to be dropping a training in my group to show people how to buy these coins and how to get onto the layer two. Um, but yeah, that, those are the three coins. So long story short, what you have to understand is when you're, you're getting into these projects very early, the only thing you can really do is look at the liquidity to make sure that there's money in the pool. If there's no money in the pool, it's a scam. If you can't sell the coins, right? If there's no way to sell the coins, a liquidity pool is basically just a merchant. Right. So if there's no one to sell the Jordans, then the Jordans are valueless. It's as simple as that in crypto. You need liquidity to sell and buy. You need that liquidity pool. So if there is no liquidity pool on the coin, which a lot of them on this protocol have no liquidity or it's very little. So what I did is I was like, OK, this is all like really crazy. Right. This is all very, very, very crazy. And um, I want to make sure that if I if I buy a coin that it actually has good liquidity. I've done this before, by the way. With meme coins, I turned uh, 10K into like $120,000 in three days using this exact technique. I looked very hard for liquidity. I looked for coins that were going to get, uh, you know, adoption with a new narrative. I bought into Shiba Inu before meme coins were a thing. I bought in very early before I launched on any centralized exchange, before I launched on Binance, before I launched on Coinbase. I was in Shiba Inu very, very, very early. I turned like 10K into like 120 grand last cycle doing this exact strategy. It is crazy, though. It is crazy and you have to be very careful. There's a good chance that you will lose your money if you don't know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, you will lose your money. If you don't know how to maneuver through layer twos, you will lose your money. If you don't know how to find liquidity pools and you don't understand the correct websites to find these liquidity pools, and if you don't understand what a liquidity pool means and all these big variables, it's gonna be very difficult for you to navigate. So just be careful. Again, it's not financial advice. You make your own decisions on your own life, but this is the decision I'm gonna make on my life. And you guys have five days left to take advantage of this layer two narrative. If you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism. Subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.